the key levels that we might be looking at for the Australian share market now. Perhaps you can take us through where we're at um, and whether these, these losses could get worse. Well, the market's down by 1.1% at the moment, and if we have a look at the 30-day low for the market, we have seen a bottom at 4,026 points. So we are watching for that to hold um, to maintain some stability on the Australian share market. Of course, if we see a drop below that, 4,000 is a psychological mark, but we'll probably see that drop to 3,850 points. But this market really being driven by those fears out of Europe. We did see yields in Europe rising, especially for that, that Italian bond auction that we saw getting away at 6%, 6.01%. That's the first time we've seen yields above 6% for the 10-year Italian bonds since January. So those fears and fears that uh, Spain will need a huge recapitalization of banks is really driving the markets at the moment. If we have a look at the Spanish banks, we know that Bankia, the fourth largest bank in Spain, has already asked for a bailout of 19 billion euros. Goldman Sachs has actually run some numbers on uh, what the other Spanish uh, bailouts may be. And if we we have a look at six of the uh, Spanish banks that they've run their numbers on using the same loss provisions of Bankia. They're, they're predicting another 25 billion euros to bail out six other Spanish banks. So all eyes once again back on Spain. If we have a look at the first hour of trade. We've seen the market down about 1.1% in that first hour. And just typical volumes, about $1 billion being traded. Don't be too shocked by NAB's 5.3% fall. It is trading ex-dividend. And outside of NAB, we are seeing the big fall losing one to one. 1.3%. But really the bulk of the losses on the Aussie market today are in that materials and the energy space. BHP is down by about 2%. Rio Tinto is losing about 2% as well. In fact, if we have a look at where the money is flowing, it, it is to those safe haven areas. The gold ETFs doing well today, up by 2.2%. Consumer staples is one area that's in the black. We're seeing those defensive stocks like Woolworths, West Farmers and Coca-Cola all gaining ground. And with the Aussie dollar at a six-month low. We are seeing those companies with overseas earnings outperforming the market. In fact, we're seeing a gain for News Corp, a gain for ResMed, and we're seeing Brambles looking flat, so all outperforming the market there. So altogether, pretty, uh, a pretty packed first hour of trade on the Aussie share market. We are watching to see that the losses aren't more than 43 points by the end of the session, and that means it would be the worst month since October. Uh, 2010. But of course, if we see a loss of more than 43 points for the ASX 200, we're looking at the worst monthly loss since the global financial crisis, October 2008, the time of the Lehman collapse. Wow, so that's if we have more than a 43 point drop by the end of today's session. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Um, that wouldn't, oh yeah, that's, that rounds out the month. It does too. We're at the end of the month now. Okay, it has been a really tough month. So, um, Julia, let's, let's talk about some potential upside here because, that, you know, that people have said to us today, this has all been sold off too much, there's too much fear in the market and really there are some bargains out there. Is that the kind of talk that's going to turn this market around or will it have to be something else? The problem with this market is that it's not being driven by fundamentals at the moment. What's driving this market is event risk and that's being shown in the type of yields that we are seeing in Spain at the moment. We've seen the shorter end of the curve really flattening out showing that people are becoming a lot more nervous about an event or a blow up in Spain at the shorter end. So we are seeing the two and the five year yields are getting much higher while the 10 year yields are remaining relatively stable. So what that really signifies is that this market is not being driven by fundamentals. If we have a look at this month's performance. It's the worst performance since October 2000, uh, May 2010, sorry, and May 2010 was a time where the market was driven about fears around Greece and we saw that European Financial Stability Fund being formed, 340 billion euros being pumped into that. We saw the flash crash happening and if we go back to October 2008, what was happening there was our fears around that Lehman's collapse and really what drove the turnaround in markets from that point onwards were the policy responses that we're See. So there is a growing expectation that we are going to see large policy responses out of Europe, out of China and possibly out of the US as well. And that's going to be the turnaround in sentiment for uh, the market as well as for market performance. The size of these policy responses are going to be important. So if we have a look at some of the policy responses that happened in 2010. Of course, we see, saw QE2 coming um, and starting in November 2010 and that really drove uh, a ramp up in risk assets. That was good news for commodity prices, good news for the U.S. stock market and good news for the Aussie dollar. 
If we have a look back in 2008 and the Lehman's collapse, once again we saw quantitative easing being the catalyst for the market turning around there. So in terms of a turnaround in market sentiment and market performances, we are looking towards those policy responses, particularly coming out of Europe, but also out for our market. China is very important, so we'll be watching.